the Canon 814XLS. An expensive piece of crap. Now, the Bolia 4008ZM2. Get the fuck out of here, go get a 16mm camera. There's only one camera which truly lives up to the spirit of Super 8, and that is, you guessed it, the Halina P200. It's got a trigger lock to stop you accidentally uh, pressing the trigger. It of course has the trigger, it of course has the trigger itself, and that's it. That's everything. It doesn't even have a focus or a zoom. It's got a little footage counter, if that counts as a feature. And uh, I don't know if opening the door counts as a feature, but uh, there's where the film goes into. And you're ready to go. Point and shoot. Very simple. That's what Super 8 was all about for some people back in the day. You went on holiday something cute happened, you just wanted to grab the camera, boom, start filming. No messing around with focus, f-stop, zooms, nothing. You just look, you look through the eyepiece and start shooting. And I've been collecting a few of these very, very basic cameras recently for a particular job I'm doing where I need to supply cameras to people who have little to no experience and have issues which prevent them from operating anything really complicated. So I went to eBay and I bought a whole collection of little cameras. So let's go through them. Well, here's the Helena I was showing you before. And uh, they really are lovely little cameras. I mean, this is the equivalent of the sort of the gun in the ankle holster that uh, the detective has in the movies. You know, it's like when, you're, when your main camera has failed you and you're in real trouble, you just whip out this thing, boom, and uh, start filming. Or do you? course we have to look first into the battery compartment because that's where all the trouble is going to be because really some of these cameras still have the old batteries from way back when and this one actually is pretty clean excellent so let's put some batteries into it all right batteries in Unlocked, and here we go. Yay! It works! After all these years. Brilliant, so that's number one. Working, we're up to, off to a good start. Right, let's check the next one. Right, so now, what have we got? This is the Halina 300. It's a very smart, black, and it is the one after the 200. The only difference is, still got a fixed focus, the only difference is it has a zoom, has a two times zoom. Uh, and this one, the zoom is seized up. Okay, never mind. Let's get some batteries in it. Ah, now you know what? I've noticed one thing that's not going to work. Uh, it doesn't have the metal strip here. You see, here's one. This one does have the have the metal plate, and this one doesn't. So either you're screwed, or you can make one out of foil. So hopefully, if I put that across these two contacts here, and then close it on that, unlock it, and will it work? Uh-oh, nothing. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put that in the dead pile. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. Probably sell it on to some other poor bastard on eBay. Strip it down for parts, who knows. All right, well, let's try the third one. What we've got here is not a Helena. It's called a Mubi Zeta 1. I've never seen one of these before, and it makes the Helenas look full-featured. Look at that. Look at those fantastic 70s colours, Those uh, that brown and cream look to it. Oh, there it comes. Yeah. Okay, it's, uh, it's in a little bit of a state here inside the film compartment, but let's check the battery compartment. Put, oh, uh-oh. Oh, dear. Vidor batteries. This is does not look good. I think these are some old. Oh my god! Ah, uh, 
we are in a certain amount of uh, trouble here. Old batteries, leaky old batteries. This is the classic what you get inside these old cameras and I'm gonna have to try and get them out and see exactly how much trouble we are in. Oh, oh. Ah! Uh, the, okay, all right. All right, I do not hold up much hope for this. Yeah, oh, bloody hell. Okay, Vidor high power HP7 batteries. They are going straight into the recycling bin. Worth it. Oh no, there's two more batteries in here. Even crapper ones. Oh man, why do people do it? Why do they do it? Why do they put their cameras away for years and years with the battery in? Four batteries in this little bastard and they're all gone. Ugh. Before, after. Working camera, fucked up camera. Well, I cleaned out the battery compartment as best I could. I filed down the contact a bit. Anyway, well, let's try it. You never know. Ah! Good God, the bloody thing works. What do you know about that? <laughs> Whoa, so it's got a hair trigger, this thing. Sounds a bit like a model train or something. And look at this, apart from the trigger, the only thing it has is this very, oop, very basic uh, aperture control. So if you turn that up and down, I think, yeah, look at that. Wide open indoors, wide open outdoors for those rainy days, for those bit of cloud cover, and finally your uh, sunny 16 right here. Fantastic, thing works. Wow, I'm gonna try some 500T in this and see what happens. This is quite a nice design. If you push this little, there's under the trigger, there's this little slider thing. If you push it up, trigger's locked, can't accidentally do it. And if you start, if you push the trigger down and then slide it, it it's on all the time. There we go. So you can quick, run in front of the camera. Film yourself. And next we have something in an original polystyrene box. It's another Halina. It's got the same functions as the uh, the other one. It just has a uh, zoom, which is also seized up. Obviously this is a problem with these old Halinas is that the zooms are pretty much seized up. I don't wanna force it in case I break the thing. So uh, let's open it up. Uh, any battery disasters here? Let's hope not. Uh-oh got old batteries in it. <gasps> hey, they came out all right and they're not even leaking. Look at that. Ever ready, high power. I don't even know if Ever Ready are still making batteries, but look at this. However old these are, they never leaked. Good for them. I will retrospectively always buy Ever Ready. Doesn't mean the camera's working though, so uh, let's put some real batteries in there. Yay! Bloody hell, thing's still working. This thing's old as I am. Yay! This makes me ridiculously happy. Now, this is interesting. Look at this. This thing on the top. It says movie light plug. What the hell do they mean by that? This is, a, this is not on any of the other Halinas because probably it got lost. Because these things... Is, this is basically just a blank with a screw on it. And uh, I've just dropped it. And that goes on there. Now what's going on here? There's a little button in there that gets pushed in. Of course that is how the daylight filter gets uh, switched on and off. Of course they wouldn't have a simple switch to switch it on and off. No, 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 no. What kind of a Super 8 camera would that be? You've got to push that, screw that thing in, and then it pushes this down. And when you push that down... There we go. See that's kind of orangey? I push that, that button down. There we go, see it disengages the filter. So it's on, off, on, off, on. So it actually has a little hidden feature, this thing, with this uh, natty little, God damn, that would be nice for the real Super 8 nerds if you could have cufflinks. Cufflinks made out of these. Unfortunately, I've only got one of them. Although what I've discovered is that these Halinas, they have little screw-in things here to for a hand strap. That also, screws into the top thing here to cancel that filter. So 
if you want to cancel the filter you don't have one of those uh, these little things you can go around with a strap sticking out the top all right so we've got three working cameras now now onto the next one it's a little bit more sophisticated than those other ones but it came with all the others and it is a Sankyo Super CM300 I love me a Sankyo love a Sankyo those guys knew how to make cameras they put everything in there that needed to be put into a camera and then they just stopped they said right that's enough that's your lot that's all you're going to need and they were right this is all you need in a camera super 8 camera that is uh, firstly let's see if it works batteries are in the handle and of course they go into one of these jobbies this is a classic Sankyo thing oh whoa I think it's working I have had my finger on the trigger already let's have a listen yay and of course, why wouldn't it be working? Sankyo's are bloody brilliant cameras, and just as long as no idiot left the batteries in them. Oh, seems to be working. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it's got that one feature where it won't do a motorized forward and back zoom unless the motor's actually running. Fair enough. And of course, it's got, it's got manual aperture, like any decent camera ought to have. And, and the auto seems to work as well. Which is interesting. The glass is quite good and uh, generally a nice little nifty Sankyo. And finally it's a Umig. As you all know I'm a bit of a Umig fanboy. I love those Umig cameras. It's a Umiget 2. It's a fixed focus heavy metal <laughs> Super 8 camera. Very little of it is made of plastic which I like because it turns out that the, uh, the the earlier all metal cameras are the ones which have survived the longest. Comes off easy. Look how shiny that is. Let's see if it works. Yep, of course it works. It's got something called an ostragon zoom. Sounds like some kind of hormone. 1.8, fixed focus. It doesn't zoom an awful lot, but these fixed focus cameras, you're lucky if you get a zoom anyway. I think it's like a two times zoom and a few nice features besides. Okay, obviously there's the shutter. Got these two little holes here with the addition of the included shutter release cable, also all metal, which I like very much. Single frame and plug it into the other one and remote operation. And plug it in there and there we go. Cable release operation this button here is a very simple backlight control if you twist it one way it opens up at one stop all other metering is done automatically it's got this little button here in a couple of different positions so it can meter for a, a couple of different ASA cartridges can't stop doing that it's got a lovely action nice action and on top what's going on here that is the filter system which basically has this plastic thing with a Sun and a light bulb on it and what you do is you put it in with the setting you want closest to that white dot if you want the sun filter in like say a shooting tungsten film outdoors you turn it around so that the sun is on there push it in that will put the filter in if you're inside you don't want the filter take it out turn it around put it back in and the filter is off it's a nice little system. The only problem is, is that it's possible to lose that thing once you've taken it out. And finally, on the back here, on the bottom, it's got this uh, complex looking sticker on the back. This is meters and this is feet. And this shows you the minimum distance you should get from your subject in order for everything to be in focus. So supposing you're at f1.8 and you're zoomed all the way out, then that's 2.3 meters or 7.6 feet. I'll tell you, they're quite good for pointing these things. Um, for instance, if you are at f8, you can, and in wide angle, you can get as close as 80 centimeters to your subject. Um, halfway zoomed out, 1.4 meters, and all the way zoomed in, 2 meters away. Just don't get too close to your subject and you'll be fine. So the Umiget 2, or as the makers of it probably call it, the Oimiget 2, because they're Austrian. And uh, I love Austrian cameras. I love Austrian people. I like Austrian women. They're like German women, but better looking and with a sense of humor. I'm getting off track here. That's the Umiget 2 and a very full featured camera for a fixed focus machine. All right, we're doing all right. We've got a working Sankyo. We've got a working Halina 
PS300 and a working PS200 and a working Mubi Zeta 1. So these are the kind of point and shoot, take it on holiday, don't know how to work a normal camera, doesn't matter, just have fun. Super 8 cameras. Great. And I'm going to have fun. I'm going to do some uh, some tests on these now. I'm going to get a, a roll of film and I'm going to put it into these and shoot it a bit. And then I'm going to develop it and I'm going to see if they really work. Because as we know, the proof is in the shooting. And once I know that they're working well, I can put them back on eBay saying tested and working. And then I can bump the price up a few quid. Haha. <laughs> and my children will eat tonight. Actually, they're eating in five minutes, so I've got to go. All right, let's see some results of what Kodak 500T film looks like in these cameras. 500T is, of course, a very fast film, good in low light. Don't know how much light these cameras are going to be letting in. And the other thing I should say is that I've slowed down this film digitally, so I've got, I've got more time to see what's going on. I only took a second or two using each camera because uh, if I'm just testing it, I don't even need to shoot a whole roll of film. Just a few seconds will do. Let's start off with the Mupi Zeta 1. Mupi with a P, not a B, like I was, I was calling it a Mubi all the time. It's because of their weird logo. It looks like a Mubi. So the Mupi Zeta 1, it works. Um, there's a weird black thing at the top. I don't know what that is. Probably some crud in the gate. Otherwise, the gate's pretty clean. And um, it's 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 kind of more focused in the center than on the edges. I mean, it's a it's what do you what do you want? It's a it's a tiny little lens on a fixed focus camera. It works. Um, this is with the filter on. Uh, I did a few shots here outside. Now this is with the minimum aperture. We're opening up a bit more, opening up a bit more, and finally with the filter off. As you can see, it's a little bit softer. The picture's a little bit softer when the iris is wide open. Now, moving on to the Halina 200. Uh, also not, not particularly sharp, but it works. And yeah, I mean, I think I think broad sunlight would be the probably the best uh, conditions for this, uh, this camera. I have no idea what position the aperture was in. It actually has an automatic exposure control and I don't have a battery for it. So who knows how, uh, how wide the aperture was. The Halina 300, Ugh, a bit fuzzy this. Don't know if the, it's a dirty lens or whatever, but yeah, looking a bit soft. It does work, but the problem with the Halinas is that they don't have um, manual iris adjustment. So I think when there's no battery in it, the iris is just wide open going by the sort of the softness of, of the picture. Yeah, not, not the best uh, quality picture there, but you know, the thing works. Now the Sankyo CM. Now this is where you can see the difference between a fixed focus and a variable focus camera. Much clearer, clean picture, a bit of dust on the lens, which is catching the sunlight. But it's uh, the difference is like night and day. It's, it, the Sankyo is obviously a superior lens here. Little color bars there, so thank you. And finally, the Yumiget, which also looks pretty good. For a fixed focus, it actually looks better. I think it's a better quality lens, but it zooms. It's a fixed focus, which actually zooms, and it looks pretty sharp, whether it's zoomed in or out. And just before I finished this film, some footage came back that was shot on the Yumiget 2 with Kodak 500T film, which was professionally developed, not by me, and my god, it looks bloody brilliant. Look at that, everything's in focus. Colors lovely, almost crystal clear. And uh, no one had to no one had to do any focusing. I think the Yumi Get has uh, won the competition. Great. So they all work. Every one of them that has a running motor is actually working. So I've got these cameras. I'm very happy with them. Uh, I don't think I'm going to keep them. I don't think I'm going to film very much on them. I'm probably going to give them away or sell them. So let me know if you want to buy one off me. They're all proven to be working now. So that's it. Thank you all very much. That was Fixed Focus Cameras. Interesting project. Fun little bunch of cameras to work with. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>